Make your day richer than it was before. Got some good times knocking upon your front door. It's the Richard Wilmore Show. Pictures one also you, you'll get I'll it over and get and have code. I am a huge coffee snob. Awesome, I am too. Well, let's talk about coffee then. For All right, let's talk um, about coffee. What's your favorite coffee plus place in San Antonio? My favorite coffee place in San Antonio. I have to say, I'm obligated to say uh -oh. press coffee. <laughs> Why are you obligated? Do they pay uh, you? They don't pay me. I work with a bunch of folks, and actually, it's a nice place. I really like it. Um, the coffee's good. The people are nice. It's a great location too. It's I like the layout of the place. Uh, it's indoors, outdoors. It has the no. upstairs. Have you been to press? No. It's a nice place. Uh, have you heard of this guy Scott Newman? No. All right. So you gotta go with it. Uh, Scott. Press coffee and uh, meet Scott. Um, he is. And maybe he can be a sponsor of the show. He could. Yes. Saying, yes. He's my video guy. He's done a couple of. Uh, uh, he's got a couple of my stand-ups from a ten-year shows, uh -huh. uh, and he works at the coffee shop. And I, I really like it. Yes, it has to be press coffee. Oh, have you been to Shotgun? I have not to be not been to Shotgun. Where is that? At? I don't know where anything is around here, so you'll have to GPS it. Okay. But uh, I GPS. Just, I haven't heard that. In no, a while. I'll look GPS at it. All right. What does that mean? Why? I don't know. It's people just say Google GPS. it. Oh. No, one, no, one says no GPS, GPS it, and then it'll take you there. That's GPS what I said. it. Okay. Google right. it if you want to like information. GPS it if you want to know where it is. Oh, all right, all right, all right. All right. Anyway, <laughs> why are we not doing the interview there? That's I know. Yeah. The only thing remaining in the coffee shop is so it, it, it's like. Probably this size, and then it has a nice window you can look at. The, the shutters are not done there. That's the only thing remaining. Once that's done, we can move the show there. Well, we'll just roll the rug in half. Yeah, definitely. Is we don't need a rug. Well, I will, but I'll just show right. up with a coffee cup. <laughs> yeah, just go show up with a coffee cup. <laughs> that's less work for me. I'm yeah. not mad about that. So you've been here for 10 years. I have been in San Antonio for, actually, let I me, mean, I, mean, I lied, eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Ten years in the United States, eight years in. San Antonio. What brought you to San Antonio? Work. Yeah. Where were you before? I was in College Station. I was in oh. Mumbai, India, long, long back when I was, till the age of 21, I was in Mumbai. And then um, all of my friends there um, were really fascinated with moving to America. I had no idea about America. I didn't, didn't care about it. I had heard about America in the news, like, yeah. But, especially Texas. I didn't even know Texas existed, wow. uh, honest. And then a lot of people was just, you know, um, 
uh, applying for their GRE and all those ex uh, entrance exams and applying for uh, future studies, like their master's program and stuff. And I just followed to like, oh, you know what, I'll, I'll just appear for the exam. I got a good score. I'm like, okay, what next? I probably need to apply for a um, master's degree. I, I did. I applied to 10 universities all over America. And I got uh, six rejects and the four uh, acceptance letters, and one of them was from Texas A&M in College Station. Um, my closest second was Syracuse, New York, which I had made my mind, because for me, for an average, I don't know, I don't know, I don't want to speak for the entire world, for an average Indian, uh, New York is America. That's, that's all, that's, at least back then, and that's all used to be shown on TV, you know, right? What's America? New York City. That's France. it. France. France. We talk about France in a, in a while. Yeah. But yeah, so it, it was all like New York City was my America. And I had made my mind to go there. Uh, but it was expensive. It was really expensive. And then Texas A&M um, was cheap. Uh, a good school though. Great school. And they offered me like uh, a scholarship. And they offered me like a teaching assistant job. So I almost like, did my master's in probably seven, eight thousand dollars, that's it. Wow. And I got stipend every every month. So it was a no-brainer right in here. Yeah, why not? And then I did my internship in Bolero uh, in San Antonio and I got hired. How much do you love Texas and San Antonio? Next question please. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, do you have any do you ever want to like move? Like my plan is to be here for a couple of years Oh uh, so I I started to uh, oh. I love Texas. I uh, like Texas. No, no, I'm not it's using the word love. Like, uh, yes, yeah, it's grown on me. Especially San Antonio. I've seen like uh, earlier, like six, seven years back. San Antonio is very different. Mm. Uh, I definitely liked Austin more at the time because um, that was where the action was. And then San Antonio's become a lot better. Uh, I'm, I'm liking it. Uh, but yeah, about moving, I would. I oh, here's the thing. I definitely want to move to a city like New York, LA or something. But then there's the second thing about your comfort zone. I've got so used to San Antonio now. I've got so used to Texas. Now people here know how things work. So there's always that fear of moving to a different place. So we'll see what happens. And I feel like San Antonio, I mean, I've only been, I've been here less than two years, but I feel like it's becoming sort of a transplant yes. city where, where new people are coming in, new blood. And, and it's so fascinating to see all of the talent here. Right. I'm still shocked by it. How many theaters there are here, how many comics, musicians, like, there's a ton of stuff happening here. Interesting you bring that up, because I've learned that too. So when I started doing comedy, uh, which was about four years back, I started in Austin. I lived here, but I started comedy in Austin, because Honest to God, I didn't even know there was a comedy scene here. Because that's where you had to go, probably. Yeah, and I, I just probably Googled um, comedy in Austin. GPS'd it? And then I GPS'd it. GPS GPS Comedy Club. Okay, I still have a, have a hard time saying GPS now. But I Googled it. Yeah, you can Google it. And, <laughs> yeah, Austin, Austin was a place that showed up. I used to actually drive to Austin to do, do a mic every week, every, like twice a week, maybe thrice. And then someone told me, uh, you live in San Antonio, you should do mic there. I'm like, oh, is there? Is there a mic there? <laughs> then you've got to learn about all the comedy clubs here, the places, the mics. Yeah, and then I stopped going to Austin. What do you, you stopped going? Well, I, mean, uh, you're traveling. I still yeah. travel for yeah. shows and stuff, but not for mics. Yeah. yeah. What, um, what are some of your favorite things to do here? In San Antonio? Yeah. Um, Watch Netflix at my house. Sit in your coffee shop, that's what I need. Mean. See, the, the only thing that bothers me, like, uh, so I was in San Diego this last week, and I was just analyzing the city, San Diego was in San Antonio. Um, I like San Antonio, there's a lot to do here, there's a lot of things, especially now. The only thing that bothers me is the weather, man. It is hot, it is really, really hot. So, that's the reason that I probably don't want to go outside that much. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of months that I'm, I really want to go out, but the rest of the time I'm like, eh, I just want to be indoors. Mm -hmm. uh, but my favorite thing to do in San Antonio, oh. uh, well, go to comedy clubs and do mics and watch some shows. Yeah, I, lo I love watching movies, or I love going to shows, checking out the different theaters. Majestic, Tobin, yeah, watching shows, that that's, that's probably my favorite thing. We, um, I want to go back, I have so many things to talk to you about. Yes. I want to go back to what you were talking about, New York. Tan Beer uh, took me to <laughs> see Friends, the, the, what's it called? It's over here. Hey. The Friends, the musical parody. Yes. Um, 
Okay, so you found... When did you fall in love with friends? Oh, um, I think when I was like 18, 19 years old. Um, and that's what I talk about in my stand-up sets as well, that it was literally America 101 for me and a bunch of other people like me. That's what America was portrayed to us. Like, watch this show and you learn about America. And um, I, don't, I don't know for what reason it just hits it hits the right now. It, like, it, just, it just appeals to me a lot. So was it shocking when you moved here? Yes. And that, oh, that's okay. Um, wait, are you afraid of cats? No. Okay, good. Um, that, which is weird because she's afraid of everyone, so I'm kind of shocked she's not here. Oh. Um, but was it shocking that when you moved to Texas and it oh, was yes. not like oh, Big, big shock. I, I, I almost cried my first, second week here. Because I, and again, part of my stand-up says I talk about this, I moved to College Station, Texas, 10 years back. College Station has changed a lot too, now it's, it's a pretty cool place. But 10 years back, Constitution had nothing there. Like, and I moved like from Mumbai, which is almost like New York, with Indian people. That's that's what it is. Uh, to move to Constitution was big, big disappointment. And I moved in like with four other guys in one apartment, and it was it was a really really bad apartment to, to be honest. And one and a half year, I I, I don't, yeah I cried to sleep. Um, it was pretty interesting, and then I got used to it, and um, I, I saw San Antonio, and then I was like, oh, all right, America isn't that bad. Uh, I still haven't been to New York, because that was my thing. I think I, I went to New York in maybe two, three uh, years later, uh, and I was like, okay, that confirms what French was. But uh, call station, yeah. Uh, in fact, I remember the day uh, I was graduating, my mom and my dad, they came from India uh, for my graduation. My mom walked into my apartment and she just burst into tears. She's like, I am so sorry oh. I did that to you for one and a half years. I'm like, no, it's not your fault. But. So yeah, it was it was shocking. Um, uh, it was a culture shock, but in a very different way than you, you'd expect. Your family was just here. Uh, right? Yes. So my mom and her two sisters were here. Uh, my in-laws are here now. And then probably after that, they'll leave my mom and dad and my brother and his wife and their son are going to be here as well. How long do they usually, when family comes to visit, how long do they usually stay? Uh, usually it's two weeks. This year has been different. Um, they stay longer. <laughs> no complaints. Of course not. No, just no complaints. observation. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's usually like two weeks to a month. I have a rule of my family visits from Wisconsin that they're only allowed to stay for like four days. I I uh, I don't I would like that rule. <laughs> oh my God, you gotta post this. But uh, <laughs> you got this <laughs> no, that's cool. Do it. Send a message there. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, I would I would like I would like I like them, but it's I like them in. Yeah. For shot, for it's hard because they travel so far and right. they want them to enjoy themselves and make it worth all the money they pay to get over right. here. And then after day four of being the tour guide and the entertainment. Like, right. It's a lot of pressure. my family, we have to go. Like, we don't just sit around in our coffee shop and like not do anything. Right, it's exactly. Like, yeah. And then you're like, I'm exhausted. This is a mix of people in my family. Some people like to be home, some people want to go out. I'm, yeah, I'm that kind of person. They're like, okay, let's do another thing, let's do another thing. I love taking vacations with my family. Like, uh, but yeah, just sitting in the house, probably not my thing. Mm -hmm. um, with me, it's fine. With family, no. Huh. Yeah. You feel like they're here. Right, you let's, might as well have. do something. If, uh, there's one, uh, interesting you bring that up. Uh, this was a couple of years back. Uh, I used to live in an apartment, in a one-bedroom apartment, with my wife. And my wife, she was going to school and she was graduating. And we had my parents and her parents over at the same time. So six of us in a one bedroom, probably a 750 square feet uh -huh. apartment. That's interesting. Yeah. That was really interesting. You really get to know people that way. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Really know them. Yes. <laughs> no boundaries. Oh yeah. Um, what do they think of you being a comedian? Honestly, a lot of people have asked me that and um, I've never asked them and uh, I really don't know. Uh, but often I, I get this question from my parents and it's probably a a uh, question that most comedians get, like, does it pay? And I'm like, not yet. <laughs> Someday it will. Um, 
But yeah, anytime I bring up the fact that, hey, you know what, in a couple of years if I get that good, I'm going to leave my day job and they're like, no, you're not doing that. My parents, my, especially my dad, tell him, he doesn't like to take that, that many risks. He's like, you got a stable thing, don't leave it. Um, so I think that's their fear. So apart from that, they're fine. Um, initially, my dad used to watch my, I, I had posted some videos on YouTube, he used to watch, watch them and he wasn't happy about it. Um, so. I think he stopped watching it after a while, and I have a couple of sets that I do now that I haven't posted, uh, but I'm pretty sure if he watches that, he, would, he won't be happy about it. He, won't. <laughs> he might get a phone call. Um, so I think we are at that stage in our lives, me and my dad, where we don't have a direct conversation. Uh -huh. uh, it's either through my mom or through my wife. Oh. Or it's through my mom, then goes to my wife, and then comes to me, uh -huh. and then it goes back. So. I think that that's what happens. Is that the safe zone then? Is that it, like the it, it is. It is. Uh, he feels safe talking to my mom. Uh -huh. <laughs> I feel safe talking to my wife. So uh -huh. everyone's happy yeah. at the end of the day. No one's fighting. Uh, yeah. So you've been doing comedy for four years. Yes. And you, sir, are nominated for Best of San Antonio. Tanvir Arora! <laughs> you know, uh, me and my wife, we've been married eight years, though. <laughs> There's one dude who's happy about it. <laughs> Do you know my wife? I don't know. Should I be married? <laughs> she didn't come for the show, so I, I don't know. But uh, we've been married eight years. Uh, we don't have any kids. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. Right? <laughs> Nothing is wrong. But all our friends now have kids. Like, we are the only couple in the group that don't have kids, and it's, things are very different now. Like, I invited all my friends over so, for some chai, you know? And uh, while we were having chai, uh, we were just whispering into each other's ears. And I was like, why are we doing this? They said, because we don't want to make any noise. The kids are sleeping. Okay, all right. This next time I invited my friends over for a movie night, we decided to watch a Bollywood movie. To which my friends were like, uh, turn the subtitles on. I'm like, we are watching a Bollywood movie. Why do we need subtitles? He's like, because we don't want to make any noise. Turn the volume down. Because the kids are sleeping. Okay, all right. This third time I invited my friends over for a game night. We decided to play Jenga. I swear to God, my friends, they played the best in their entire lives. The game lasted like six hours because my friends, they didn't want the Jenga tower to fall because that will make some noise and guess what? I stayed, the kids are sleeping. I just want to know what drugs are these kids on. I've never seen them awake in my life. Man. Yes, I... I'm surprised. <laughs> how, do you, how do you feel about that? Um, uh, I am really, really honored. First of all, I, I wasn't expecting, but I'm really honored, and I really thank everyone in San Antonio who's voted. Uh, I really want to thank this person, uh, Johnny Silva. Uh, do you know him? No. Okay. 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 Yeah. Well, you need to go get on more. I my living room, I guess. Yeah. Or just use Facebook more. Yeah. I'll GPS it. You GPS it. Uh, Johnny Silva. Uh, if you watch this, thank you so much for nominating me. He, uh, he was the first one to nominate. Uh, I think when uh, polls were out for initially, he didn't have set nomination. Maybe he had a couple names, but he could enter those names. I don't think so. I was part of those. He entered my name and he, he just uh, gave me a shout out on Facebook that, hey, I'm not nominated with you. And then it kind of caught up. Uh, I'm glad to be in the top five and yeah. I'm really, really honored. You can go to the San Antonio current website. We'll put it on the bottom of the screen to vote for Tampere. Yes, It goes please through do. the 30th of June. Yep, almost a week more. Tori was here last week talking about how yes. we should vote for her. So now you're here this week. Do you have anything to say to Tori or the other people nominated uh -oh. or why they should vote for you? I, I'll, be, I'll be honest. I mean, jokes apart, yeah. If you've seen any of us and if you honestly like uh, one of us uh, vote for that person. It doesn't have to be me, it doesn't have to be Tori, it doesn't have to be Larry, uh, definitely doesn't have to be Cleto, as Tori said. But, <laughs> uh, now, if you like a comedian, vote for that. Uh, just not because you're their friend or anything. If you like our comedy, please vote for that. And we have a special guest, you can vote for her as well, or him. That's a her. It's a her. She's the co host. Um, what do you think of the comedy scene in San Antonio? It's pretty now good. It's growing. It is growing. Yes, you're right. Uh, past couple of years, I've seen that growing. There's a lot, of, a lot of, not just the comedians, the lot, even the audience. A lot of people are now really interested in watching live comedy, mm -hmm. which is a really good thing. 
Uh, I believe we have really, really good comedians in San Antonio. Um, uh, it is grown, but there's, there's definitely that one problem that most of us have. And as an artist, you have the talent and you have the resistance or you get lazy about it. I think that's the thing that most San Antonio comedians need to address. Um, I hardly see any San Antonio comedian going outside like to Austin or even Houston and doing shows there. They've started, a lot of people have started, but there's not m more. Like San Antonio comedians stay San Antonio comedians. I think that should change. Uh, but there's a lot of brilliant talent here. Yeah. Do you have a favorite place outside of San Antonio that you like? To do comedy? Well? Yeah. Uh, Austin's definitely been my favorite just because uh, I started there. Uh, my next favorite would probably be Houston. I've not done much in Houston, but I, every time I've been there, I've really had a good time. I've definitely had. Uh, outside Texas, if you ask, uh, I had done a couple of shows in New York, which were great. And that's the thing with big cities like Houston and New York. Uh, there's just a lot of variety of comedy. Uh, different uh, personas, just in, even in the audience, and com comedians, just plethora of things, like just vague topics that I've talked about. Um, my favorite place uh, would, just because I had the recent experience, would be uh, Bay Area, especially Oakland. The comedy there was really good. I did a couple of shows there. They were amazing. They were really, really good. What do you have coming up? I have nothing coming up. Nothing, nothing <laughs> no, I do, I do, I do. Uh, Comedy-wise, like I like stand-up comedy-wise, I I have a couple of shows that are out there. I need to plan my shows. I, I do run two shows. Uh, one is a ten-year show. I'm still still struggling to find a place to do that. Weird. I don't know what that's like. Ah uh, yes, <laughs> uh, it's been fun. Um, but yeah, once I finalize that, I need to do a couple of ten-year shows before the year end. I haven't done many. And then I also want to do my other show that I do is a English comedy, stand-up comedy show. I call it Jokes OK Please. Um, and we've, so far, me and this guy, uh, Chris Collins from Austin, we do it in Austin. I probably want to do it in Houston, San Antonio, Dallas as well. And it's basically a mix of English and Hindi, and we call it English. Um, that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's, it, it's picked up. Uh, we've done a couple last year. Gonna do more of those. If you had to pick three words to describe yourself, what would you use? Uh, wow, angry, <laughs> um, quirky, and fun. Why are you angry? Um, I don't know if it's like recent, but I mean, I've, I've had a lot of anger issues. I want to post that on Facebook, like someone asked me, so you do stand up con comedy, so you must be funny. I'm like, no, I just got anger issues. That's, that's, that's what it is. Stuff to yell about. Right. Uh, I don't know. I've been having a lot of anger issues. So, uh, not, I don't hit anyone yet, yeah. but um, I don't know why. Right, exactly. I don't know why I, I do. Um, I, I really don't know. I need to see a therapist for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you quirky? Um, just my random things at times, so then my wife usually gets confused, like, why am I, why are we doing this, or why are we doing that, and I just throw random things at her, and uh, random things at my friends, so let's do this, so let's go there. I took you to the French uh, musical parody, uh -huh. so, I don't know what, <laughs> what you thought of me after that. I don't that know if that's quirky, or just, uh, theater, but, um, Quirky, uh, in a sense that I made bad, made bad, bad right. decisions, yeah. Random decisions. Random bad decisions, yes. yes. And then what about fun? Fun, um, man, so I'm, I'm pretty moody. Uh, maybe that's what the anger issue is about. One day I'll be really cheerful, one day I'll be really, really sad, and I don't want to talk to anyone. But when I'm cheerful, I'm really fun, and I talk a lot, I try and make jokes, I try and make people laugh, I uh, come up with the weirdest, um, yet fun YouTube video recommendations for people to watch. Um, and there's half fun. That's awesome. I know you've been working all day and then you came over here right after work. So yes. don't let you go so you can like have a life and go home. Sure. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we take a picture and go? Um, vote for him. Yes, for please vote for San me. Antonio, uh, San Antonio. Uh, San Antonio do Green. you want to talk about the Friends musical parody? <laughs> Listen, I follow them on Instagram. I, you do now? Yeah, I do. Because I follow everybody on Instagram. So we go to this 
your, I think it was your friends, your family, someone dropped out, so I got... Literally everyone, so it was my wife and two of my friends, and they dropped out. Because they're smart. Yes, I figured, no. <laughs> and so we show up, and Tram, who I'm going to see this weekend, and we talk about it every time I see her. Uh, speaking of her, she really wants to be invited to this show, and I, I, I guess you don't want her to be on this show? I don't see. <laughs> Tram. Uh, Alright, yeah. Was she crying about it? She was. She called you names it. Um, Did she? Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing her this week and I'll ask her what name she called me. I just talked to her today. Calm down, Tran, you're coming on the show. Um, yeah, and it was the... It was probably the worst thing I've ever seen in a theater. No? I almost agree, except for that uh, the female who played Rachel. I think she did good. She was good because yeah. she had like her like cadence down. Right. But the show itself... show was a college production. It was high school production. It was a right? high school yeah. without a theater program. It was like yes. the set, the clothes, the... I mean... And I've never, I've never seen a full episode of Friends before. Which really bothers me and kind Sorry. of hurts me a little bit. I know. My friend Mark hates it too. He set up a special um, thing on his Instagram... On his... Um, Netflix that I he has like the entire thing right so I can log in and watch them when I watch. You still want to it? It doesn't seem funny to me. It's, it's like Seinfeld. Did you watch Seinfeld? Seinfeld's funny now. All right. Oh god. Do you want me to just like kill him right now? <laughs> so this is where the anger comes. Yes. Out. Yes. Yeah. So here's my thing. A lot of people debate about Seinfeld and Friends. Seinfeld is actual comedy funny to me. Mm -hmm. To a lot of comedians as well. Friends is more like um, a comfort food. I just want it in the background, uh -huh. um, just running, and it, it comforts me. It gets my anger a bit low. I mean, we should have had a plane back yeah, here. For I you. know, yeah, that's okay. All right, Tim. All right, let's take this picture. Let's take this picture and get you out of here. Thank you very much right. for coming on. Go vote for him. Yes, please vote for me. And let Thank me you. figure this out. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. All right. Okay, ready? Oh. 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 Okay, oh. I'll take a picture of my crotch then. What? All right. <laughs> Okay, this is what happens when you buy stuff from the dollar store, kids. It doesn't, this is our budget. Okay, here we go, ready? All right. Okay. Cool. Thanks, dude. Thank you, this is fun, yeah. I, I felt... So you've been doing comedy for four years. That's right. Do you have a, do you have any, like, best of, worst of, like... A show? Shows, yes. Oh, yes, oh. Uh, Let's start with the best one, because okay. it's recent, and I talked about comedy uh, in Oakland, right? So uh, there's this comedy group called Comedy Oakland, and they invited me uh, to do a competition, and that by far that is the best show I had. Um, it was in uh, a restaurant, they had an upstairs just reserved for comedy, and it was sold out at night. Um, and you know, and there are times where um, the comedian goes up on stage, and the story builds, and the audience kind of then, then starts falling in love with the comedian and starts following them. And then there are other times the uh, audience just hates the comedian right from the start. And then the third time, the moment you walk up on stage, you don't even don't even say a word, and the audience just likes you. That's what happened that night. Oh. I just walked, and I, it was a surprise, surprise for me because that usually doesn't happen. I, I got to at least uh, talk for a minute or two to actually get them on board. But this was just right then. They were like. And it was um, eight people or eight or ten people. The uh, comedy competition was four minutes each in each round, and just it was really fast-paced. Um, and they liked me in each round, and I won that. Wow. And it was pretty cool. I won some dollars, and uh, had they gave me a spot in their late night show, and the audience loved me, and it was a great night. What's that feeling when you walk up there? Can you describe that? And like when you instantly know, or even if it takes you a couple minutes and all of a sudden you can feel that room turn. It's, it's a lot when you're just like hanging out socially or in a party. Uh, you know, you know, you get that vibe. It's through the eyes or just the energy that you feel that you're connected. Uh, when you're on stage uh, for a comedian, I think it's mostly about people just being attentive to you. Like no one's taking their phone, no one's talking to you with their friend. Um, and that is the yeah. time, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but there, you, you just have that connection with the audience, and they're just really keen. It's the body language, they're probably leaning towards you, and they want to listen to you, and you see a couple of smiles on their faces, and then when you do one joke, it hits, and then it just the ball keeps rolling. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's that's a feeling. So that is one of the best shows I've had so far. What's worse, sober people or drunk people? Oh, uh, that depends on my set. <laughs> Uh, I would uh, probably feel sober people, um, and that's also probably because I don't drink, so it's easier to connect. Uh -huh. And I've done a lot of shows for uh, uh, for primarily Indian audience during the day, uh, and there's, there's no alcohol. It's been tough, but uh, that's that's the audience I've, I've dealt with. So yeah, but then at times here, yeah, uh, drunk audience is pretty fun too. Especially late night shows, um, and you're know, doing that kind of material where they don't want to use their brains too much. Mm -hmm. They just want to have fun time. Um, that's fun too. And then, what's your worst? My worst show was in town. Um, I have talked about it a couple of times. Uh, there's a big Facebook post about it. This was probably year one of comedy. Um, someone got to know um, that I do comedy, and they invited me to do a show, and the, the show was at uh, a gas station owner's convention in town. It's a real thing, I'm not making this up. <laughs> a gas station owner's convention, that, that happens in town every year. Is it just for people in town, or is it like nationwide? It's, I think, just uh, maybe South Texas or something. Oh. So, um, that was a, a theater convention. It's already uh, going really well. Yes, and they invited me to do comedy, and I, I asked them, do you know, like, what my material is like, and um, they were like, yeah, 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 just, just come and then I was like, okay. Uh, they promised me some amount of money, and I was like, okay. Um, before the show, I definitely asked them if there are kids in the audience or what's the age group like, and then uh, just some demographics on it. They gave me that, and I was like, okay. Uh, I was asked to do about 15 to 20 minutes of comedy. In minute six, my mic was cut off. And this is, by the way, still the year one of me doing comedy, so I'm very new to it. Uh, and I, I, so I said some, uh, some stuff about it, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it later. So there's a joke about how I say I don't like Indians. Uh, I'm from India, and I don't like my own people, and uh, they didn't take it well. They, it did not go well. And I, uh, the punchline, I keep repeating the punchline, hey, you know, this is this because I don't like Indians. This is this because I don't like Indians. And they didn't, they didn't like that. Um, they cut off my mic. The host comes, takes my mic, and she's like, that's enough, uh, just go and sit there. I'm at that table. I didn't still register what happened. You know, I was still in shock. I, I, don't, I was still confused what happened. And then the guy who booked me comes up to me and he's like, uh, it'll be nice if you just leave the premises. <gasps> and I have never been that humiliated in my life. I get in my car, I call my wife, I'm like, this has happened. That's when it really hit me. I'm like, oh my god, I've been thrown out of a show. Uh, I didn't even ask him, like, if I, I'm still getting paid. Um, <laughs> I, it's been three years now, I don't think I'm getting paid for that. But that's been the worst show ever. I learned a lot uh, that I need to know my audience, I need to know what people's boundaries are. Did you use that joke after that? I did. Oh. I did, and here's the, uh, I'm probably going to post it on YouTube, but I do the entire joke, and then I say that, hey, I was thrown out of the show, yeah, that hurt me a little bit, but you know what hurt me more? That no one at the gas, gas station owners convention, not even a single person at the gas station owners convention came up to me and said, thank you, come again. <laughs> that's how I end the joke now. That's, that's, what I, that's crazy. Yeah. Did you think after that, like, am I, should I be doing this? Like, was it that jarring to you to be like it was for a couple of weeks I would say and I, I just stopped completely doing that joke and then I you know, I was like you know what no if I believe in it um, if I made wrote that joke uh, I still do it and definitely do it in a way that people don't get offended or just choose my audience that mm -hmm. they're not gonna get, get offended and definitely I had that uh, the tag that I told you right now I definitely do it with that <laughs> that's like a safety net. That's a safety net. Yes. Yeah. What got you into comedy? What got me into comedy? That's pretty interesting. All right. Um, I guess we're not done with the interview. Okay? Yes, we're not. Okay. I mean, this is. Do you need more water? Uh, we got one, one sip. Right. So that's okay. I always be, have been fascinated uh, since I was a child, and I, li I literally had this conversation with a friend of mine this morning that when I was when I was a kid, and um, uh, that that's one thing. That's one. Um, thing I have about me that I've always felt like, um, I don't 
probably different from society, they're not accepted in society even back in India. Um, just a shy little kid doing his own thing, never in the limelight. Um, I've always had that. And then um, I've always been fascinated with like the glamour world, uh, called Bollywood or Hollywood, or uh, just the glamour world by itself. Uh, I've always been into writing, like uh, when I was like, I don't know, 15, 16, I used to write poems and things like that, uh, love letters, you know, uh, but really creative ones. And then um, when I was about 17, I think, there was, uh, just like you have Last Comic Standing here, there's an Indian version in India, and I just made up some jokes. I did a stand-up set. I wrote a stand-up set, recorded myself, um, and that, those are the times with the DVD, made a DVD, mailed it in. I got a call from them. And I'm like, all right, come, come on an audition. So I went there. Uh, I see all of these people that I've seen on TV before, and I go and I freeze in my audition. Mm -hmm. I just could not deliver a joke. I just froze. Um, so the dream kind of died there. Never took up that. Did my master's. Did got a job. Did the regular thing. Um, yeah, this is a long story, by the way. So a couple of years back, so four or five years back, whenever um, we were in Las Vegas, uh, me, my wife, uh, a lot of my friends from college. It was like a college reunion. We went to Vegas and uh, we had a lot of fun. Um, so by the way, I don't drink, I don't gamble, but we, I still had fun in Vegas. And uh, it can happen. It can happen. Um, so we, at day four, uh, that was the last day, we just sat across the table and everyone got serious about their lives. Like, and there's a topic about who's doing what in, in their life. And everyone had really good things to bring to the table. You know, like I'm a manager of this company, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. And I'm like, I have a day job, that's all right. Uh, it's going on. <laughs> I didn't have any plans, and I still had that uh, thing in me that I want to do something creative. Uh, I still didn't know what, but that, that's what I left. I'm like, um, I want to do something creative, and I have, say, um, I said, maybe I have two years, uh, or three, I said, I have three years before I figure out what I want to do. And three years was uh, me turning 30. That was my deadline to myself, that I have, before I turn 30, I got to do something. And my friends were like, no, dude, you got two years. I'm like, no, 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 I got three years. And it was a true story. I had miscalculated my age. The shock of my life, and I'm that <laughs> dumb. But I write some good jokes. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't sleep that night, man. I lost an entire year. <laughs> what happened to that year? Yeah, I know, it just disappeared. And my wife, actually, I want to thank her. She got me into comedy that night. She searched for a stand-up comedy class in Austin at the Institution Theater. Uh, uh, ran by this guy, Brentley Hilbron, and my wife was like, you want to do this? I'm like, yeah. I signed up for that class that morning. Everyone woke up and I'm like, hey guys, this is what I'm going to do. And I, I signed up for the class and then uh, months later, uh, some of those people showed up to my first show. Oh my gosh. That video is still on YouTube. <laughs> it That's is. awesome. Who are you, um, who did you watch or who did you listen to? Uh, who do you still listen to? Or so back in India, there used to be, uh, there wasn't a, uh, like a culture of stand-up comedy. Now it's grown, it's there. But back then, it was more about being uh, mimicry artists or just people uh, doing things similar to stand-up, not really. Uh, there was this one guy called Raju Srivastava. He had, he had a very nice uh, observational comedy. That's a guy I used to uh, watch. There's another guy called Johnny Labor. Uh, he's a comedian in Bollywood. Love him. Um, and then I started... Definitely, Russell Peters was a big, big thing um, in India. I used to watch him a little bit. And then when I came here, I started watching uh, American comedians and two of my favorite comedians. I know a lot of people hate him. I also dislike him for the things he's done, but on stage, I still like Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. uh, I do like his comedy. But my absolute favorite is Gary Goldman. Uh -huh. I love that dude. I, I respect him a lot. I love his writing. I love his delivery, everything about him. Uh, so he, uh, the more I watched him, I was like, yeah, that's who I want to be. That's it, definitely. In fact, I was really fortunate, fortunate to meet him uh, last year when he was in San Antonio. Uh, me and my wife, we went for a show, and he was really nice to meet us after the show. We talked. Um, I told him I'm um, doing stand up comedy, and he was like, oh, to work with you sometime. And I am Facebook friends with him. 
Right now. So Till the time he deletes me, but right now. But right now. Right now. officially your friend. Yes. Yes. Just message him and be like, I'm ready to do comedy with you now. Um, he doesn't respond to my oh. messages. <laughs> now that you've tried. <laughs> no. He responds to my tweets every now and oh. then. Yeah. Well, start. Can you message someone on Twitter? Yes. Instant, like, DM them? Yes, you can. For people who Google and not GPS, uh -huh. they can do that. I know I can do it on Instagram because that's how I get most of my guests. Now, once you're connected on uh, Twitter, um, you can. Huh. Yeah. Who um, do you love in like the San Antonio area? My city? favorite comedian, uh, Josh Cabaza. Yes, Cabaza. I know you don't like me, but I do like you. Well, I like your comedy. I don't like you, but I like your comedy. Uh, no, he's, he's a nice guy. He's a really sweet guy, and I love his comedy. Uh, I think he was the very first uh, comedian that I watched in San Antonio. And right from his one first open mic set that I watched, um, not his first, my first watching him, uh, I liked his comedy. I really like his comedy. I think um, he's, he, in my opinion, and I don't know what his plans are, he's ready for New York. He's ready for Comedy Central. He's ready for he's Netflix. So he is, yes, he is good. He's really good. Um, you're also good because... I'm good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. because you could, be, you could be the funniest in San Antonio 2019. Vote for me. Vote for him. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Oh. Um, I don't want to miss anything. I don't know. I think we're good. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Let's try this. <laughs> let's try to end this interview again. And I bring up promotional consideration paid for by the following: Stacy and in coaching, the world needs your flavor of magic.